Oh, 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 that is cold. I think that's as far as I take this van. <laughs> Hi, bud. <laughs> you so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and I are out enjoying one last back road adventure together with truck before embarking on a pretty significant project that's going to be a real game changer for us. So I'm a little nervous to get into it, but I'm confident I'll be able to figure it out and I got my dad to help me. So that's always nice. He's a professional, so it should go as uh, smooth as something of this magnitude can go <laughs> but it is so nice to be out here in the sun this late summer sun and it smells amazing oh i love the smell of the trees at this elevation the pine just hits different than it does down in the valley below so i just uh, wanted to enjoy it one last time in case this project takes me until snowfall hopefully it won't I've just pulled over. I didn't even pull over. I just stopped in the middle of the road to like film this little waterfall here. And I went to turn my van back on. Um, and I have power, but I have no crank. Like, absolutely nothing. There's nothing. Uh, I'm going to assume that's the starter, but I don't really know. And I'm in the middle of the road, and there's no phone service here, so... <sighs> I'm so glad I went for that big walk. I would freak out right now if I hadn't done that walk. And I'm just like, all right, well, there's water. <laughs> I can filter it. I have some food. All right, so uh, I think it's the starter. I don't actually know, but I did figure out that it's engine code 85. Luckily, I have lots of experience, um, whatever that trick is called. I don't know. I don't have an OBD reader, um, and you don't really need one. So I just have to figure out what engine code 85 means. You should never deal with things like this when you're hungry. I was on my way back for dinner, so... Cranking position. <laughs> what did you do? Well, my dad just came and saved the day, and it turns out that my starter wire was just hanging there. It had come off, so he just <laughs> touched it back together while I cranked it and it fired up. So now I have to just go straight back to their place without turning off the engine. And uh, yeah, I got some work to do. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> uh. 
Are you gonna do more projects while you're here? Are you Are you pretty much done them all now? I am done. You see, you can just rest for a couple of days, and clean up. And and uh, and and put some videos on on the YouTube. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The girls love me. <laughs> Can you hold the other side? Um, it's fully unbolted. Oh. So can you hold, yeah, top and bottom like that, and then I'll get this side off. I see. All right, lift it up. All right, and we'll go around here. Nice. Articulating ratchet attachment makes it possible, but working with that thing is just a little finicky. <laughs> Well, by this point in the video, you might be wondering, what is she doing? Because uh, I'm obviously not doing body work. I did all that last summer. I am doing an engine swap, and <laughs> it is probably the most ambitious van project I have undertaken thus far. Body work was a lot of work. It took six weeks. Um, but if I messed it up, I still have a mobile home. The interior build was no problem. Like you can just wing that. It's not a huge challenge. I don't think to do the most basic carpentry out there, but an engine swap is at least to me, feels like a pretty big endeavor. So 
back in April when I was on the island and I was just getting started uh, editing and posting videos to this channel, I was on the phone with my dad and he informed me that my parents would like to buy me a new engine for a truck and so they had set aside a budget to buy a rebuilt motor that we will swap as well as a lot of the other parts that are going to need to go into this to make this project a success. So. One of the things we were doing is replacing anything that coolant has ever touched because the coolant in this thing is like all rusted. It's got this weird deposit stuff happening and it's super corrosive and I've already had to replace so many components in the cooling system, but without replacing all of it, it's just going to keep being issues. Um, and I'm pretty committed to truck as my forever home. So this is definitely a worthwhile investment to be putting a new, a new motor. It's probably going to take a few weeks to do this project and I'm going to do my best to keep the videos balanced with Frank and time and nature and just stuff that's not just purely engine rebuild, but expect the next few episodes to be a lot of uh, me doing an engine swap. <laughs> and figuring that out as I go and learning things. My dad is a mechanic slash heavy duty mechanic, so I am not completely on my own on this. I am, in, I am expected to be doing the vast majority of the work myself, but my dad is guiding me and he's gonna help me along and he's gonna make sure that when everything's put back together, the truck runs, so that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> art. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh, very good. I think from here we can get the rat out. Yeah. Because there's a bit of room to just like slide it over and then it'll swing out. Um, I didn't take this out because it just doesn't seem like it's in the way of anything. It is. Okay. Because remember we have to lift the motor upward and okay. then out, right? Okay. Because we're going to have to lift it. So the oil pan comes over top of the cross member. You take the battery out, you can take anything you can reach, you can get up, you can stretch the motor, can come off. Rack can come out, hoses can come out, lower rack guard can come out. And then once you've got everything you can here, then pull your dog house and start getting in there. Well, this is my coolant, and I hope that it's obvious to everyone why everything it has touched must be replaced. I'm just absolutely amazed that I have driven truck for almost five years without a catastrophic failure yet. I don't know if you remember when I repaired this rad hose by cutting a chunk of it off, but... Um, I knew about this project then, which is why I didn't put the new rad hose on um, and saved it, hoping I wouldn't need it until this uh, project was time to happen. There we go. Whoa. Well, that's going to be it for day one of the engine swap. I got more off than I thought I was going to today. I've only been at it for about four hours or something, but I'm really hungry and my phone's about to die. So I'm going to go clean up, eat something, and then get to work editing a video <laughs> for Friday. So I'll be back at it tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Frank. 
Uh, it was cold last night. Or this morning. It's been cold. I heard my dad scraping ice off his window. So I think it's time to add some more of the blankets to this pile. What are we doing first? Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, the voice came down down yeah. here, but uh, but there was no. You couldn't hear it. Yeah. Okay, so let's figure that out. Nice. That's pretty easy once you know how. Off of here. So if you wonder why it's expensive to go to a mechanic, it's because you're paying a hundred or a hundred plus bucks an hour to pay someone to do fiddly little crap like this. You know, and they have all the knowledge and the tools and like all that stuff, right? But like things don't just happen quickly. <laughs> Everything takes time. All right. And there you have the distributor, cap, rotor, and ignition control module are underneath. And that is oil. It took me so long to get this bloody bolt out. Not because it was tight, because I could only turn it like a sixteenth of a turn at a time. Such a pain in the butt. I don't even know, man. I don't know. Is it bolted on? Yes. Take it off. Nasty. Gross. All right, maybe that doesn't come off of there. I'm going to try out some sourdough gods. Some what? Sourdough gods. Does that mean I'll get to eat? Yeah. Nice. It means you'll get to try out the experiment. I'm hungry. Of course. <laughs> uh, so, one of the great things about just taking the engine apart is that I don't really need to know what things are or what they do to undo bolts and strip parts. So, uh, it's unstressful in that way. But, um, I am feeling like a little bit like, wow, this is a huge project. <laughs> um, why am I doing this? And uh, yeah, at first uh, when the idea came out for this project, it was really just like preventative maintenance to avoid me being royally effed somewhere on some back road or some town far from here where it's hard to get help. And the thing is, is about a few weeks ago, I started to smell coolant in the exhaust when I fired up the van and that's not a great sign. And then yesterday when I drained the coolant, there was oil in it. So that's like a really bad sign. Um, that's a sign that my head gasket is going and I was probably only weeks away from a catastrophic failure that would have really, really just 
be in a bad situation because uh like if that happened on the coast or something i would have had to pay to tow my van all the way back here and if that was on a back road like the cost of towing would have been so much um especially if it was like uh kind of a rough back road or a tight back road that uh would have been just not pleasant for a tow truck so uh, this did initially start as like a preventative thing, but it's something that absolutely has to be done right now uh, before I keep driving my van around. So it's kind of lucky timing because, um, yeah, as soon as I started to see signs of serious problems, I was already on my way to do this. So really grateful for this opportunity to put in a new engine and uh, as frustrating as it is, at times so far and i know will be throughout the process uh yeah i'm just gonna keep myself well fed and take lots of deep breaths and if i need to take a break and walk away or maybe like go out in the woods and scream i'll just do that and then come back to work <laughs> i'm shoving uh rags every time I take something off that creates a hole into the engine because I don't want to drop uh, like tools or screws into the engine and then need them and have them be stuck in there. So, well, I got the alternator out. It is much heavier than I was expecting. And ideally I wouldn't put this one back in. If I could afford to, I would put a high output alternator in so that I could uh, someday have a power system that I've lived without for so many years uh, I would uh, make it a lot easier to keep up with on videos but I have a feeling this one's gonna be going back in because this is already a pretty expensive project Frank you're such a good supervisor thank you <laughs> you can go lay in the shade you can take a break if you want to be off duty I did not expect that coolant would come out when I removed that bolt, but luckily I had the pan down there, so. Huh, interesting. Oh, I totally stripped the edge off that bolt. Yikes. All right, what is this? What is this? What is this? No idea. They look a pine cone. Thank you to the critters that occasionally live down here for leaving me presents. My dad said to leave the fuel lines for him. Oh, I can go do that thing. It looks like it should slide that way. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we just put it there. There it goes. Oh, tricky. I feel like these lines need to come out before this can come out. Yeah, so you got to take that off. Okay, so get right? rid of that hose. Lose the hose. Then take that bolt out. This bolt out. This bolt out. What is this thing? Uh, coil. Ignition coil. Ignition coil, okay. Okay, there are O-rings on the ends of these fuel lines. O-rings. They must not be lost or dirtied. O-rings. O-rings. There are fuel inside these lines. Yeah. So I would go down and get the plugs and find plugs immediately for both. See what I've done? Oh, okay. Yeah, a plug and a cap. If you've already loosened these, make damn sure you've already loosened that. We'll do it right away. I haven't loosened anything in there. No, why are these loose? I don't know. Theirs is like that. No. I didn't do it. I know, but see, that goes into your intake manifold. Well, I didn't loosen them. 
<laughs> okay, so that's like a lot of your problem right there. You're running lean. Uh, so day two on the project was, <laughs> I mean, it was fun, but it was also, I spent a lot of time just, uh, finding the right size, like, wrench or socket, <laughs> like, so much time is just spent going, uh, <laughs> figuring out what size you need and <laughs> finding the right tool. I ended up just, uh, collecting the ones I was using most in my pocket, which was pretty handy, but... It's like sometimes to take off like one part, you need like four different size sockets and wrenches. Like there'll be literally there'll be four bolts and they'll all be a different size. Made some serious progress today, two days in, and I have most things off the engine that need to come off before we try to remove it from the van. I am so tired. <laughs> I just be I feel like I've been fighting falling asleep all day. Um, I stayed up to like 6 a.m. editing, uh, the night before last. Yeah, I'm just super tired. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but I'm worn out. <laughs> I feel like I was worn out before starting this. And then it's like, you know, I was up to like one editing last night after doing a bunch of work and then got up and it's like freezing and I'm cold and then... Yeah, just like work on the van, have dinner, I'll go hang out with my family for a bit, and then probably have another five hours of editing I'm hoping to do tonight so I can get an episode up tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it's stretching my brain, I can feel it, and putting it back together is really going to stretch it, but then I'll have like an understanding of how everything works. So, uh, But it was pretty funny because my dad is like, yeah, you might want to get some masking tape and, like, label where, like, all the plugs that you took off go. Uh, <laughs> it was a little late for that. I had just, like, got in a frenzy earlier and just, like, un just unplugged everything. I didn't pay any attention. I just pulled every freaking plug I could to try to get the wiring loose, so. Yeah, it's going to be a game of, like, matching ports when it goes back together. I have a loose idea of what goes where, but... Oh, I didn't label anything. I label all the bolts and stuff, but not the plugs. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming along on this journey with me as I put a new engine in my van. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll also put a link to John Carlo's uh, channel. I did a tour with him a while ago if you want to check that out. That's uh up in my video catalog <laughs> but yeah i hope you have a great day i really appreciate you watching and we'll see you soon bye